They call their nationwide revolution a revolution of the spirit. In as much as it is a revolution, as Aung San Suu Kyi states, of overcoming your own apathy, your own cynicism, your own fear, your own ignorance, and from your from that sensibility, you're in the best position to elevate the status of your so-called enemy, to awaken or ignite their conscience, to begin to see what she would call the hand-in-hand -hand solution to the political social problem there. The non-violent approach is, I think, about the most difficult approach in the world, especially nowadays where weapons are getting more and more powerful and uh, people get more and more dependent on weapons in order to get what they want. But uh, we are we are convinced that the non-violent approach is the best. And if they see that you won by the gun, they'll take up the gun. So in the long term, she says, peace through nonviolent means is the only answer. When a man doesn't have a gun in his hand, he or she tries harder to use his or her mind, uh, her sense of compassion and her intelligence to work out a solution. fiery, intelligent, articulate, composed, vulnerable. Here I am, a journalist coming to interview the female Gandhi leading a nonviolent revolution. And she genuinely, genuinely wants to know about you. As the BBC called Burma a country of 50 million hostages. It's a country where there are no human rights. It's a country where there's an ecocide, the ethnic minorities, there's genocide, the prisons are filled with political prisoners. It's horrific. It's a terror state. At the same time, a woman empowering the loving kindness to connect with the person right in front of you. Her revolution, as she said many times to me, is a one person at a time revolution. So her strength, I asked her this, you know, she said, I was a mother, I'm a mother. And when I came to Burma, I left to be with my dying mother. I left my two children at home and my husband. Gradually, as the revolution began to expand, I simply expanded my feeling relationship to the concept of family. So that going from a nuclear family, I began to embrace not just the democratic forces in my country, but began to embrace even the so-called opposition and the enemy as my family. And from that, she empowers what I can see, the power of love as her weapon of choice and compassion as her weapon of choice rather than aggression. And it's not as if she's complacent in that. She's a ferociously intense person who's able to distinguish the criticism of a policy rather than attacking a person. The 
first step towards real political change in Burma is dialogue. I would like our people to be able to develop a vision together, to be free. Do take it from somebody who has to live in a society which is not free, that freedom is precious and freedom is necessary. For the first time, I'm questioning the two driving forces of my life, the outward activist part of me and my quest to understand my inner self, what some people call spirituality. I'm setting out to discover what happens when spirit meets action. I've got to get active. I've got to do something. I've got to put some feet up under these prayers. because you are. There is no space between human beings. And what I do to you, essentially, I do to myself. I am here. I am human. I was not born to fight you. I was born to live and be free. We're here because we're pulled by a compelling vision of a world that works for everyone. We will be here until there's a resolution, and a resolution in terms of the people, the people's resolution. Thank you. It's not about something later on. It's who I'm showing up as right here, right now, every moment of every day. And that's the only place hope lives. We're one family, one people. We're citizens of the world, citizens of this planet.